<laughs> Viva La Vegan! Hello, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and today my guest from London in the UK is Alicia from Bo Bonjour Bohem in the UK. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank Did you I, for having me today. My pleasure. Did I say that name right? Close enough. Bourgeois Bohème. It is, it is a bit of a mouthful for uh, most people. <laughs> Bourgeois Bohème. Very good. It sounds good when you say it properly. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's about 9 a.m. on Wednesday um, over my side of the world. And what time is it over your side of the world? It's about uh, four past midnight. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so, when, hey, you know. and hey? are you um, Wednesday morning now? That's right. That's yeah, right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, so thank duty you. calls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for staying awake for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so tell me about your brand. What is it? Um, basically, Bourgeois Bohem is an ethical footwear company and it's based on my ethics as a vegan. So all our footwear is suitable for vegans and vegetarians. Um, being a vegan myself, um, I found it really hard to find shoes or any products that I liked. And back in 2005, which is a long time ago, mm. um, launched um, Bourgeois Bohem. And... Um, we used to stock sort of footwear and shoes, belts, wallets, purses, and everything else. Um, and we did that for a few years. But we've had been on a little bit of a sabbatical for the last two years. I decided to sort of have a break. I've got two young kids, you know, two girls who are only four and three. Understandable. And, um, yeah, and also, too, we were restructuring the business and to deal just with footwear because I love footwear. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we've been doing. So we've relaunched for April this year. Yeah, I just actually noticed the new website. It looks amazing. The, yeah, um, the art and the illustrations and the design is beautiful. Yeah, well, you know, we want, we wanted to have, you know, something that was different and exciting, mm. uh, you know, and I love the illustrations. I've got a fabulous Laura who's doing my illustrations um, with me. And, uh, you know, to be different, to make it fun, you know, as a, you know, us as a brand, you know, we don't want to sort of um, hound people into veganism. It's all about showing that there are products out there, that we can be fun with what we do, and, you know, to have a fun way in regards to educating people. So that's sort of our aim with what we're doing with our footwear. And, um, you know, we hope that we achieve that. And just to show people that, you know, you can live an ethical lifestyle um, and not compromise um, on your ethics. Definitely. And um, if people don't know, the website is bboem.com, which I'll spell for you, b-b-o-h-e-m-e.com. And, yeah, you've been going since 2005, which is mm -hmm. the time I've been going with vivalavegan.net. And oh, have, wow. haven't things changed since we've begun? <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, yeah, it's great, you know. Um yeah, especially in the UK. I mean, I'm, I'm from Australia originally, actually. And even, you know, when I look at Australia and what's happened there, I mean, it's great that, you know, it's really, um, veganism's really grown there. And in the UK as well, um, you know, in regards to restaurants and food, etc., you know, everything's so readily available. And, you know, there are more and more vegan companies and brands that are growing. So uh, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, veganism is becoming a little bit more mainstream, I suppose. A long way from it, but it, it's getting there. Yeah. I think so. Like, um, whether or not I agree with the things that are promoted in the mainstream about veganism, like, you know, the health aspect a lot or go vegan and get hot sort of thing. But, um, yeah, I think people are at least speaking about it more than maybe they were before and maybe a few more people know how to pronounce it, and yeah. you know, which is always good. <laughs> it is, it is, you know. Um, you know, when you think about, I suppose, Bill Clinton mm. and Al Gore and, you know, people, you know, big high-profile people who are sort of looking and highlighting vegans and that's mm. always a, a positive thing um you know a long way to go but yes. i think you know it steps in the right direction so um you know as long as we're positive about what we're doing and highlighting you know the positive um and you know compassionate ways of living you know for us veganism is not just a diet which i think a lot of people yeah. think it is yeah. um it's a total you know lifestyle for us basically it's footwear it's clothes it's mm. 
the furniture we buy in the house, it's products that we use, cosmetics, etc. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll get there, you know, mm. one step at a time. And I think, you know, um, leading by example or showing people like, you know what you're doing showing people that you can have some really good shoes and you know, they don't have to um be like really cheap synthetic type materials no. and it yeah. can be really good quality because i think that seems to be lacking in a lot of places yeah and i think um the perception out there about veganism or vegan footwear is that it's just cheap horrible plastic it's not great quality um, and we're all sort of hippies who want to wear Jesus sandals, you know, and, and it's totally different, you know. <laughs> you know, the, the materials these days are all sort of high-quality microfibers mm. um, from, you know, Japan, from Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, the components that we try and use as eco-friendly as possible, and, you know, often people are actually unaware that it is actually not leather. They're actually quite surprised by what they see. Mm. And, oh, <laughs> excuse me. You know, there are, I don't know, maybe about 20 vegan footwear brands out there now. So it's great that we, it is growing and therefore, um, you know, we, we can actually show what's available. Yeah. So when you began, were, were there many shoe places? I can't remember many um, existing 10 years ago. Um, yeah. I mean, there are, there are the usual um, guys who've been around, you know, for years. Yeah. Uh, um, I would probably say, you know, not not to step on anybody's toes here, yep. is that, you know, maybe the fashion style side wasn't quite there. Yes, yeah. So I think what's happened now, there's been, you know, in America, especially here in the UK, there are brands coming out there which do, you know, realise that, okay, yes, we need to be a little bit more high quality, mm. best looking, better styles with what we're producing. So that's what um, we're aiming to do with our product, basically. And um, you said you say online. Um, you explain what sort of materials you use. So, mm. what can you tell us? What exactly you mean and what you use by Italian faux leather and eco-friendly natural materials? Yeah. What exactly <laughs> does that mean, and what's it made from? It's a my it's a mouthful. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in regards to using you know faux leather materials, you know we're never going to get away from a degree of plastic with our materials. We're not going to sort of put our hands, we'll put our hands up and say, yes, you know, they are um, a degree of plastic in them, but we tend to use the Italian microfibers. That means they're very fine denier uh, material and therefore they've got the breathability of them. They're more eco-friendly, um, a degree of biodegradability, the way they're manufactured, they're non-polluting. Um, and then also to, you know, in the past we've used um, organic cotton, we've used hemp, natural slice or soles, and recycled components for footwear. So, you know, we're not perfect, you know, um, with what we're using. They're not sort of all biodegradable, etc. cetera, um, but a degree of it is. And, you know, we're always looking for better components and more eco-friendly components that we can use. Being a tiny company that we are, um, it's unfortunate that we don't have the huge quantities that a lot of these you know, um, manufacturers or component manufacturers demand. So, you know, we are limited in that sense with what we can do. Um, But, you know, we're, we're, we're... getting there each time and um, you know we I go to Italy to material fairs and um, sourcing materials and seeing what better materials are out there so we're always trying to improve what we're doing basically. And you said um, you've um, handpicked factories um, in Portugal, how did you yes. get to Portugal? <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> I hopped on a plane and flew over there and it's been, uh, it's difficult to find partners, um, mm. you know, who are sensitive to what we want to do. Mm. As soon as you say you want to use synthetic materials, it's like, oh my God, you know, cheap plastic again, etc. So it's a matter of finding the right partners who understand where we're coming from, mm. who understand our ethics, um, why we're doing this and, you know, the actual manufacturing of shoes, leather versus faux leather is a very different process. Okay. Um, therefore, factories have to, 
you know, take the time and effort to actually work with us and work with these materials. So we do commend them and say thank you very much for helping mm. us because um, with faux leather, sometimes, you know, they don't have some type, they can melt sometimes on mm. the machines. Wow. Um, they don't sort of stretch the same way that leather does mm. and, you know, a whole lot of different sort of technical side of things that, you know, people may not know about, but mm. it is a fairly complex thing. So. It's been um, a challenge, let's yes. say, to uh, <laughs> find some right partners to work with us. But yes, you know, we have found two fabulous factories and it's just a matter of going to Portugal, going into the factories, taking the time to talk with people, having samples made um, and, um, you know, a lot of time, a lot of money. But, you know, we've finally found a couple of factories which are great. So um, we're really happy with that. That's and, great. You know, it, yeah, and it's important for us, you know, to be transparent with what we're mm. doing. We want to make sure that we make in the EU. I can fly over to Portugal, you know, within a couple of hours and be on the factory floor. Um, you know, I can speak to the people that are making the shoes, um, have actually seen the shoes being made, which is really okay. exciting, yeah. on the production line. Mm. So, um, yeah, it, it's great. And you could see them getting looked after um, with their wages or the way that they're working and yeah. that as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you think that's important? Oh, definitely, mm. definitely. For us, you know, it's important that, um, you know, it, it, whatever we're doing, it's traceable. So if someone mm. says, you know, where are your products made, where your components come from, you know, we can say that, <coughs> excuse me, you know, we know exactly, you know, been to the factory, seen the workers, seen the certification, certification, um, etc. So it is important for us. You know, mm. when you look at you know the recent you know um, year long anniversary of that horrific collapse in Bangladesh of factories, mm. there a thousand people dying, and yeah. you know, and you know people in the mass out there, don't, mainstream, don't really have an idea of how their products are made and by who and where. So for us, it's important, definitely, that we can put sort of names to our products and, um, yeah. Yeah, important. that's really good. I think that's important also um, for a lot of vegans to not just be specifically to care about just the animals. Mm. Like, you know, people yeah. forget humans are animals too and, mm. you know, you're trying to get something that's cheaper or something that's vegan that doesn't hurt, hurt our animal friends and then you're forgetting yeah. about all the humans that you yeah. are probably realistically hurting a lot of them in the process yeah. of making things. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, and that's why, you know, with the leather industry, mm. one, you know, animals are being slaughtered, you know, um, rainforests are being deforestated in India, etc. Tanning processes, um, tanneries are polluting rivers, mm. um, carcinogenic, um, you know, carcinogenic um, chemicals, etc. you know, that are affecting humans. So it's a whole gamut of um, everything else that uh, we're looking at, just not on the animal perspective, but on the human perspective and also on the environmental perspective from our point of view. So, yeah, very important for us. Exactly. That's great. Good yeah. to see and hear. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, it does get difficult because here in the UK, you know, you can go to certain – shops and buy a pair of shoes for ten pounds. Mm. You know, I mean it's hideous, you know, how how are they able to sell a shoe for ten pounds? Mm. So it is difficult for us as a company when people say our shoes are expensive. Mm. For us, we don't think they are. We think they're a true reflection of what the time and the effort that we've taken mm. to, you know, make our shoes, source them the time and effort to um, you know, research factories, um Manufacturing the EU is not exactly cheap, no. uh, and you know we can and we can put our hands up proudly and say, well, no, you know, we don't think they're expensive. We reflect the effort that we've put in there, mm. and we hope that people do appreciate that. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, do you have a like storeroom in London for your shoes, or are they just out the back in a big warehouse? Or <laughs> <laughs> now, in the early days in 2005, they were. <laughs> We've gone on a little bit from there, thank goodness. Um, we do have uh, 11 retailers who've taken on, taken us on, you know, I call them the Bobo family, who've taken us on spring summer 14, which is great. So we have a retailer in the UK, the third estate here in London. We have a Visu in Germany, Pseudo Shoes in America. 
um, and a few more retailers sort of um, in Belgium, in Canada, Australia. Actually, Australia, there you go, vegan style in Melbourne. Oh, yeah. good. Yes, that's I know fair. the guys from there. Yeah. Good, good to Yeah, hear. so they've taken on our range for spring, summer 14. So it's great. Cool. You know, it's really good that we've had this support around the world, that our shoes are sort of getting out there. So um, we hope that we can onwards and upwards with that. And obviously, of course, via our website, beboweb.com. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, that's great. You seem to be covered. You have seemed to cover quite a lot of areas. Some. There's a lot more to go. Oh, always is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what's... Work is never done, you know. <laughs> no, when you have your own business, it never is, is it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what's your favourite style or shoe that you that you have that you sell? Oh, I can't say I have a favourite. I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, particularly for me, I think it's. Um, I've got the shoe here. Here we go. Oh, good. It's, um, I don't even see it. Basically, oh. it's our Chelsea boot. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, because I have two young girls, um, this boot is actually named Matilda after mm -hmm. my eldest daughter. Oh, lovely. Because, um, you know, I needed, because I've run around to school with her, taking her to school, I needed something comfortable and practical. And I would say that my little old Chelsea boot here is um, is my favourite. Um, and she comes in two colours, but she's, she's got grey with sort of a yellow gusset and we've got brown with a sort of baby blue gusset. So... Mm -hmm. um, that she's my favourite at the moment. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and you said you're originally from Australia. What area? Um, well, we were last living in Sydney. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, I was born in Adelaide, mm -hmm. but I grew up in Singapore, and I've lived in Canberra, Adelaide, and Sydney. So I'm sort of a bit of a nomad, and now here I am in England. So yeah. um, <laughs> i backpacking here in 2000. We've never left, really. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what what are your favorite places over in the UK or in London? Um uh, my favorite place well county is Yorkshire. Yorkshire, okay, uh, where you live. Mhm. Mm I love the um, dales, the moors. Um you know, I grew up watching all creatures great and small yeah. and um I just love it that um you can go you know, hiking out for a day and not see a soul for a day, you know, wow. it, it's fabulous. So that's, you know, I mean, there are lots of different places, but mm -hmm. um, that's my favourite, mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, in London, there's so many um, the, uh, theatres, there's so many museums, um, and it, it's amazing what, what you can, um, you know, in regards to inspiration and design, mm -hmm. creativity here, it's amazing. And... Um, also, too, because we're so close to Europe, you know, you can pop on a train and you're over in I love Paris. That. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. So, in some senses, uh, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. But, uh, you know, Australia will always be home. We'll, we'll get home eventually one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I haven't been to the UK or Europe yet, actually. That's um, in the next couple of years. That's top of my list. Ah. And I love long distance train trips. So I'm just, I've got all these ideas in my head of all the trains that you can, you can, you can catch ah. over there and <laughs> and okay. I'm, I'm not really into big cities so um Yorkshire sounds lovely that the green and just wandering around and that that sounds like my yeah. sort of the UK <laughs> yeah it's amazing it's amazing I mean there's the Lake District Peak District oh my goodness you could go mad here there's yeah. um a, for a tiny little place there's mm. a lot of beautiful places to go and see and visit and yeah. I really want to go to where the Bronte sisters lived. That's top ah, of Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. We've been there. Oh, um, yes. I kind of remember the net hall. No, it's not Hallworth. I think that's Jane Austen. Anyway, mm. we've been to sort of the spot and the bit where the tree was where she sat to um, for inspiration from one of her books, which I can't remember now. But anyway, oh. yeah, it's a lovely country. Cool. Yeah. Great, yeah. I look forward to it. What are your favourite um, vegan restaurants or vegan places? Um, there's, um, oh, there's tons really. Um, yeah. here in the London, I suppose we are spoiled, but, um, there's La Sweet West, which opened maybe a year ago. Fantastic sort of raw food there. Um, and there's Manor Restaurant mm -hmm. and, um, gosh, I can't even think of all of them now. Um, Mildred's, um. I've heard uh, of Saf. I'm looking forward to going to Saf. Well, unfortunately, they don't. They're not here anymore. They shut down. What both? Which, or just one? Yeah, both of them oh, did. Yeah, unfortunately, 
So they're not around any longer, but they do have, I think, their fast food, I think. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But unfortunately, they're not around any longer. Devastating. Yeah, but, you know, there's the gate um, and, oh, you know, tons of places here, Mm -hmm. really. So you can either go to sort of a more higher-end vegan restaurant or a really sort of quick-eat restaurant, a couple of, you know, lots of cupcake people around here and... Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there's um, the Third Estate um, shop in Camden. That's sort of a clothing mm-hmm. and oh, cool. accessories. And that's where you can get some bobo shoes too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, in London, um, sort of V-Cross is another thing near King's Cross um, where you can get is, vegan. Is that um, the grocery? Sorry? Is that the grocery? Yeah, you can get yep. some groceries there. They also sell some shoes, etc. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and then there's Whole Foods market here as well that's, that's a u.s great. company yeah so they've got sort of shops all around the place so that's amazing we've got one close to me here in richmond so we can just pop there and pick up all sorts of vegan goods wow. yeah so, i i yeah. love i love the thought that they'll come into australia one day whole foods ah right have they mentioned have they well um no not necessarily but i do know okay. that someone else owns the trademark for the name over here so ah. if they come, it's going to have to be rebranded. So that might not work as well. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. So yeah, cross fingers still. You never know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you've got some great. I mean, it's amazing how many vegan places have grown. Um, oh yeah. Australia as it is already. You know, the cruelty free shop I think was in Sydney. They've opened up in Melbourne yep. now. That's amazing. And then obviously. You know, you've got Justin with Vegan Style there. Um, well, and Melbourne, my sister- Melbourne's like the hub of all the vegan stuff. Ah, okay. Yeah, and of course, what, what are those guys? Ethical Wares, isn't it? I mean, they've been around for a millennium. Ethical Wares, it's- where are they? In Melbourne. Melbourne, eh? Yeah. Mm. Have I got the right thing? Yeah, I think yeah, they are. I'm yeah. not sure about that name. The Vegan Wares, you mean? Oh, vegan wares, yeah, that's yeah. it. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethical wares, sorry, is here in Wales. Okay. <laughs> yeah, vegan wares. So they've been around for ages. And my sister lives in Canberra, and there's all sorts of, you know, vegan places there. So, yeah, yeah. it's great. It's great. Yeah, mm. definitely. And in Brisbane, where I am, we've got heaps of places too. We've got the Green Edge, which is like the cruelty free shop. So it's our okay. own, our own um, uh, grocery, vegan grocery store here. And they actually have a cafe okay. in it as well. Wow. So, um, and then we've got heaps of vegan restaurants and raw places, yeah. especially down the Gold Coast. There's a lot of places. Yeah. So, yeah, we have quite a few options. Yeah, it's amazing actually because yeah. we were back there at Christmas, and Mum and Dad are in Caloundra, the oh, yeah. um, up the coast. Yeah, the Sunshine Coast, and we headed up. I can't remember where we headed up. Somewhere up, up towards a waterfall, and um, just popped by this raw vegan restaurant. It was amazing. So we had maybe a kind living like, cafe. Ah, possibly. Yeah, that's, oh, uh, I'm not, I can't remember what, Mulaney, I think that is, kind yeah, of cafe. Yeah, possibly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a couple, I know there's at least another one, but I can't remember. I've been traveling the past few years and I came back and all my friends like, oh, there's this place, there's this place, there's this place. And I, yeah. I just keep going back to my favorites. I haven't tried all the new ones yet. No. <laughs> You have to go on a travelling food fest in Australia. I know, Australia. definitely. I do that down the Gold Coast quite a bit, but I, I don't really go up to the um, Sunshine Coast, so I should okay. do that soon. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful place. <laughs> Lovely. And, Delisha, tell me why you went vegan in the first place. Um, Basically, it's love of animals, really. Um, you know, the ethics behind... Um, you know, if I love them, why am I eating them? Why am I, you know, using them as a commodity? Um, and it was crazy, you know. So my sister and I, when we finished school, uh, we went veggie and then vegan after that. So, you know, it's, um, to me, it's, you know, exploitation of animals. Um, and I don't agree with it. So that's why we went vegan. And um, my husband's vegan now, much to the disdain of my mother-in-law. <laughs> And my my two daughters, who are now four and a half and three, Mm -hmm. um, they've been born and brought up vegan, and they're super healthy. So, you know, it's um, they're an amazing testament to veganism, basically, my two daughters. So, um, you know, so if anyone ever questions me, I just say, well, hey, you know, (laughs) look at my daughters. They're perfectly fine. Yeah. And um, what what do you suggest when people say, how do I raise my kids vegan? 
Um, I mean, I basically say, look, you know, really, it's not as complex as it is. Mm. Um, you know, it is pretty easy as long as you have a balanced diet. Um, watch, you know, watch the food groups. Mm. Um, looking at, um, you know, proteins and calcium, and you know, as long as you're you're having across the broad food groups, um, mm. making sure it's balanced. I mean, that's the main thing. And these days, there's so many. Um, products out there and it's mm. so easy and I think it's knowledge basically yeah. so as long as people know what they need to do mm. then it's easy so I just try and provide resources um, speak to them and say look actually you know read this this and this mm. I can help you with this um, pop to the shops with them and actually show them how many vegan products are actually mm. on the shelves I mean it, it's amazing you know it's not as though we have to do anything very different mm. because they are vegan not really at all and was your partner vegan when you had the the girls yes, yes. so that helps too doesn't it if you you it and does. your partner are both vegan yeah yeah it, it, it is difficult I mean it's, it's often a question you know with I've often thought about in regards to could I, I don't know, you know, could I actually be with someone who wasn't vegan because mm. the, their ideals and their ethics are so different from mine, you know, but I, I'm not in that situation. Yeah. So possibly, you know, yes, but, um, but yes, he is vegan, which is great. That's so, um, yeah. And I guess the biggest problem or hurdle would be other people like your like like you were saying his um his mother and maybe his yes. family or other people because everyone has an opinion, don't they? Especially yeah. when it comes to like raising kids, yeah. and yeah. Um, their opinion is always the best thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so that would be really really hard to. Like, especially when they're not vegan, they don't understand it. Like, their ethics aren't shared, yeah. but they still yeah. think you should raise your kids however society tells you to. Mm. That yeah. would be the hard thing, I think. Yeah. So I think, you know, people think eating meat is the norm, basically. And to me, you know, it's just about stepping back, looking at the reality of things. Um, and I find that um, people sort of want to hide away from the reality of, animal slaughter and mm. you know and the environment and what's happening out there so you know I just try and be positive yeah. with um, veganism if someone asks me about it I, it's always on a positive light you know yes. and I think that's the main thing is that as long as we can show that we're healthy we're positive mm. you know we're trying to make a positive difference really when it comes down to it um, I often say to them I often sort of ask them a question I say why do you think I'm vegan yeah you know and that sort of gets them thinking so yeah. if they ask me a question I often ask them back okay um and that way it makes them think a little bit versus yeah. me, you know, I feel that they're always sort of on the defensive mm. and that's that's not really what I want to portray. Mm. So um, that's what I tend to do, just pass it back to them. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. And then, mm. yeah, like you said, they can think about it and maybe try yeah. to understand, oh, would yeah. she be this or would she care about this more? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, and as mentioned before, you know, um, people often think it's just a diet and it yeah. goes far, far more beyond that. So, you know, it's great that just meant talking to them about it let, lets them mm. think a little bit more about what they're doing, which is great, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I guess that's my issue with the mainstream, um, you know, media or society at the moment is that they focus primarily on the health aspects or the dietary aspects mm. of veganism and the rest of it, I don't know, doesn't seem to matter to anyone. I don't know because that's harder to understand for a lot of people. I'm not sure. But, you know, there's always there's always something about anything that people connect with or they don't connect with. Yeah. So some people care about the environment, animals, health, whatever, but yeah. hopefully they can see the rest of them after yeah. a while. Yeah, and I think, you know, in some sense it may be a good way to focus on the health because I think if people in the mainstream may not think too much about animals and the environment but they actually care about themselves and their health, yeah. then to me, you know, that possibly, you know, that is possibly a good light in regards to to focus on that, I think. And um, and I think then the mainstream tend to sort of understand a little bit more from that mm. sense. Yeah. yeah, I just don't think enough people really do care about their health, though. Like, you can see people still drink, people still smoke, people still eat rubbish. Yeah. I just, like, when people say they that should be the main focus, I'm like, well, people don't seem to care that much, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> it depends. Yeah, I suppose it depends. Uh, you know, I think people are getting healthier these days. Yeah. And, you know, you have those aspects of um, people who will continue as they are. Mm. But um, I don't know because I suppose I surround myself with people with similar interests and health. Um, mm. I don't see too many unhealthy people. I don't know. Yeah. yeah but, um, yeah. Yeah. What, what's the vegan scene like over there? Are you involved with much of, like, do you go to many of the events? or? Unfortunately, not really. Mm-hmm. And the reason being is I've got, I'm so busy yeah. with work and I have my two children. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't actually get a chance to um, do much of that. But, you know, I'm looking, once sort of things die down with a launch, etc., um, then hopefully we can um, get out more and do more, you know, within the vegan scene. But there's tons of... Um, you know, London vegan groups, uh, Fat Gay Vegan, he does sort of monthly meals and there's drinks and a beer fest and there's veg fest here and London Vegan Festival. You know, there's Mm. tons of things that are happening here in that respect. Uh, You know, there's a Jane's, uh, you know, a million things that are happening, which is fantastic. So, um, you know, I tend to sort of um, converse online, you know, in this digital Mm. world. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Mm-hmm. In more in that sense but um you know now that we've sort of got got the site launched and the products launched out there then it'd be great to sort of really get out there and uh, you know talk about it show people the product and mm-hmm. um it, yeah it'd be great and when you're saying you um the launch have you just launched a new range for the season we have we have so it's spring summer 14 um we're a little bit late but you yeah. know but it is launched now it is live on site cool. um and it's just a small capsule collection for men and women um we have gone for classic styles um nothing crazy for me um the designs are based on something that i would wear you know as i Mm. mentioned before you know i'm busy running around from school back home back out um so they're classic styles with a contemporary twist so with bobo we've gone for sort of asymmetrical styling and we've gone for Sort of our lotus flower, here it is, which is oh, yeah. our logo. So we've gone for little things like putting all these details of the lotus flower detail on our shoes. Is that lotus? Is the lotus flower the black or the yeah, behind so this, it? Yeah. Ah. So this is a lotus flower here, but then my be- my fantastic illustrator Laura has illustrated um, yeah. the lotus flower. So we've had that digitally printed on the material. Um, so that it's. You know, it's basically our exclusive design, which mm. is which is what we love. And I love our shoes. <laughs> so that's what we're aiming for. And then with the men's, um, you know, just subtle subtle sort of detail. I don't know if you can see. but Is that black with, and brown? What are those colours? Uh, brown and beige. Okay. Is beige and, the, near the tie area? Yeah, sort of yep. this area here. Mm-hmm. And with the broguing, oh, I don't know if you can see very well. No. But it's nope okay anyway we've gone for sort of a lotus flower um punch on there so to give it that sort of subtle detail so um check out our website and you can see it in more detail (laughs) exactly (laughs) sorry the lighting here is not so great (laughs) oh i think it's just skype as well yeah (laughs) and so could you tell me what um the process of making shoes what oh aspects of it may or may not be vegan? Like, what do you do to um, that ensure that every every part of the process yeah. is vegan? Yeah, I mean, basically, one is the materials to start off with. Um, two is cross contamination. So, obviously, we would love to have a vegan only factory. It doesn't mm-hmm. exist. So, the factories where we produce do produce leather. So, it's a matter of you know, um, speaking with them and ensuring that their the cutting knives, etc., are you know cleaned as much as possible, so there's not cross contamination there. There is um, non animal based glues mm-hmm. that are used, um, and those sort of the main criteria that we're looking at in regards to having no animal you know ink mm-hmm. derived ingredients within our products. And when you say the glues, do they have at the places that make the shoes? Do they have you know, animal-based glues and non-animal-based glues and you can with, choose or they you've yeah. had to bring them in? No, we, with one we've had to bring them in, but uh, more or less these days um, from discussions of factories I've had, most most of the glues are non-animal-based. Okay, just because it's cheaper or...? Um, 
I think it's just really more readily available on the market, I suppose. Okay. And I think um, the glues that we use are sort of water-based glues as well, so to try and make it as eco-friendly as possible as well. Mm-hmm. Cool, that's good. Yeah. Good mm. to hear. Yeah. <laughs> and have you, have you like, over the 10 years that you, or almost 10 years that you've been going, have you mm-hmm. learnt, have you changed a lot of ways that you would do things? Like before you didn't know, oh. say, about the glue, now you know, or was there a transition type? Not really. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would, we always knew what we didn't want in the footwear. So we always knew what we wanted in the foot in regards to nap natural as possible, no animal derived products, etc. It's a steep learning curve because yes. my background is a health professional. Okay. Nothing to do with um, shoes. So <laughs> it's been a steep learning curve in regards to learning about footwear, footwear manufacture, the components that go with mm. it, design process. I mean, it is crazy. Yep. People do not understand the complexities of making a shoe. Um, you know, we often get people, you know, poor old things. They say, you know, can you just make me this shoe? It's like, well, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's not that we don't want to. Yeah. It's, um, you know, when you make a shoe, you start off with the last and then you have to make sure, which is usually in the old days, it's this, you know, the wooden shapes. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's what a shoe is sort of um, made on. It mm. is shaped on. Um, so you have to get that right for a start, mm. and then um, you have to make sure the materials are cut, they're fit on, they're like jigsaw pieces to make sure they're fitted on properly, yeah. uh, that they're blocked, and then all the other different components that go in a shoe. I mean, it's a, it's a very, very complex process, and, you know, our shoes are more or less handmade. Mm, wow. Or, um, you know, it's a very labor-intensive mm. process. Um, the, you know, as I said before, the pieces are fixed together like jigsaws. They're all hand sewn, or they use sewing machines. They're all put together, all hand glued. Mm. You know, there is some obviously some components of um, putting, you know, lasting and blocking on machines, etc. But more or less, they're handmade. So, yeah. how long so, would it take from you know you you in your head you've got this great design with you know the lotus yes. on like that shoe for example and yeah. from your idea until you having it in your hands like you did before oh it can take a year wow yeah <laughs> so for the initial the initial concept that we had was sort of a year to 18 months so mm. It is uh, it is a long process, mm. um, and we have to work. You know, in the fashion industry, unfortunately, you know, you have to work a year, eighteen months ahead of schedule. Yeah. You know, so we're working on spring summer fifteen already mm, wow. on something there, um, and you know, when you decide on what you want with the factory and the, you choose the different materials that you want, the different colors, um, you're sort of choosing from these little swatches. And then mm. when you actually get in reality and you get the samples back, they may not be as expected, the materials yeah. may not be doing as what you want, and then you have to go back and get another prototype made. So, mm. you know, it can take three prototypes before we actually get the actual product that we need, and all of this takes time, basically. Mm. So it's not a matter of, you know, get a shoe, you've got it in a week. It, mm. it, takes, <laughs> it can take months. So, um, you know, and I think it's um, – you know, appreciating that it, it is a bit of a process, but, yes. you know, it's um, something that's worthwhile. Yeah, good. Good work. Yeah. Keep it up. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I'm ready to retire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially if you have to think in advance all that time. Like, you, you're, you like, already, oh, finally finished that. Oh, no, now I've got to work with next year. Exactly. It's, like, it's continuous, isn't it? And it that's is. overwhelming yeah. sometimes. Yeah, it it can be, you know. I mean, we're running a little bit late this year, so I've sort of squeezed in three seasons um, in a short period of time. But, yeah, you know, you're always thinking about what are the colours from the next season, how can we innovate it and make it a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, so it's it's ongoing, basically, you know, because mm-hmm. there's the design process, the manufacturing, but then you've got to do with the sales, the marketing, the social media. Yeah. Uh, the illustrator, the graphic designer, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it's um, ongoing, yeah. But, you know, you know, it's fun, it's fun. And, you know, to run a business based on my ethics as a yeah. vegan is amazing, is yes. amazing. So, you know, I'm just really happy to be able to do that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Good for mm. you, Alicia. <laughs> oh, 
thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today and for staying awake. Yeah. Not a problem, not a problem. <laughs> I think I'm near my bed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and if, if anyone wants to find out any more information, have a look at the website, which is bbohem.com. Perfect. Great. Well, cool. thank you so much for having us, Lee. <laughs> My pleasure. Have a great night okay. and I'll speak to you Take later. Care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.